Good afternoon, everyone. This is Chrissy from Solstice ATR and Vulcan Capital Research. What I'd like to do is keep this video short. The coming week is Thanksgiving. We're going to have a short session this week. We're going to have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. This is regular hours. Thursday would be the holiday. I hope you enjoy it once again with your family and loved ones. And Friday is a half day session till 1 p.m. East Coast. Whether you trade or not, that's fine. I should say this week was actually the volume was very light. We were between 36 to 30 percent less volume on this weekly candle than the prior week. And I'm going to call this video. Is the trend changing since we had seven weeks up, six weeks up, and Friday, what that week was actually a push back up inside on a doji. If we cannot clear 31, 12th area, 31, 11, 75 to continue higher, I'm not being biased to being bearish. We want to trade what we see, but I think there is a possibility around 145 point to 185 point retracement back in before we can continue higher for the Christmas and the holiday season. So let's break it down one by one. Um, this is the Fortune 500. These are the major gaps. I have an oval here in this cone, but I'd like to make sure that you guys understand there's a channel up here, a channel down here. What we have is a sharper cone. Usually when we have a sharp cone, it is considered to be more bearish than a flat symmetrical triangle. And let's go to the daily chart first of all and take a look at what we see. We go down, put the daily chart. At the same time, we have this upper channel, lower channel. We continued higher. We consolidated last week and eventually we broke up. Since the breakup, we came back and had an inside day of the prior breakout, and we filled this minor gap from Monday. This all this little shadow I had it up there. If we fall through the 3092, 3090, the 18 SMA won't hold us together. The 88 area, 89. I think eventually we'll fill this gap here, come back to this smaller channel that the computer did grab because these are two com points that the computer grabbed looking for the back side of this oval and this channel eventually fall back to the 38.2 and the 50 SMA and that's around 100 point back down 110 and if we come back to the 50 it's about 125 come back to this oval area and this this major gaps these two areas when we continued higher this is where I'd like to get a nice bounce back but I'm not trying to be bearish, you know, shorting the 31, 11, 75, 31, 12. If we cannot clear the 31, um, I believe it's around 17, half to 18 and continue higher, look for the reset. I'm not biased to being bearish. As long as on the daily we are above the 3103, it's still bullish. So understand when it goes to shorter time frame, the trend does change and the retracements of FIB and levels do tend to keep us in line. And if you notice the 78.2, where did we close on Friday? If you look at that oval, that oval was 30, I mean the 78.2, it's 3110.91. Let's call it 3111. Where was the close on Friday? 3112. So Make sure you understand if we cannot continue up and we fall through the 3101 area, 03 area, it becomes bearish and we eventually can go down to the backside of this first channel in this oval and eventually continue. And the 3090 is my line in the sand to stay bullish on the shorter time frame. Let's go to the four hour chart. And the reason why I am showing you the four hour chart. This was the Friday's high from the week before, which was 
30 98 quarter and this is the reason why I wanted you guys to see it and this was the gap to continue whenever we tested it we had this area here when we're in the overnight which was retested which was 3102 half this is why I marked it between this high this candle and this gap we fell through on Wednesday Thursday and came back up and we eventually came tried to retest the low we had higher highs here every day the 3090 the 3092 and eventually that was 30 what was this one uh, 309775 this is going to be a key tell if we cannot clear the 14 area 1450 and the 18 to the upside if this creates a cup and handle and continue higher that's fine if it doesn't falls through and clears this down channel this wedge this cone I think eventually we can fall back to the other side and fill this gap here this was a consolidation from the prior week the pucks are very close. You can see this puck is here for two days, almost identical. This puck was a little higher by here, and this one was higher by here. Then we did another one here. We re revisited it. We went higher, then eventually fell through. We created side action Wednesday, Thursday, Friday inside the prior three-day range. If this is going to be the range to continue higher, it's fine. If it doesn't, we'll go the other way. So make sure you understand we are very technical traders. We're not biased to being to one side. And if you notice, the four hours telling me 3100.23 stay bullish. So with the value area high was 17, the puck was 3105, and the value area low 3102.75. This is why I am. We are inside this range. If we fall through this area, look out, we can fall down. So I hope this was helpful. To understand what the S&P 500 is doing let's go back to the daily and I will show you the other three instruments um, this is the daily we'll start with the Dow which you know I don't put much attention to it as much as the Nasdaq 100 or the S&P or the small cap due to the fact it's only 30 companies that are traded in the Dow it's a more of a concentrated overall trend of those companies it doesn't represent the 500 the fortune 500 or nasdaq 100 and this is why i i keep an eye on it so we have an uh you know wider channel here and a wider channel here we have this short cone we broke out of this triangle and continued higher there are gaps in the area it is this green box here as if we don't fall through this candle we stay above on the daily the 27 let's call it 27 27 640 we're still bullish if we fall through it and we fall through the 27 uh 530 area i think eventually we can fill back the gaps and these are the pox you know which we have been revisited there's this one here that's a virgin there's this one here there's another one in this area. There's another one here, which we retested recently because this was the consolidation of the prior week. If you notice, this candle was just really retested. This consolidation before the breakout, we had Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday down, and Wednesday, Friday, we took off back up. We had an inside range on the daily chart on YM from the prior week. It's a similar situation, six weeks up one week consolidation as a doji let's take a look at the nasdaq slash nq the nasdaq has the same you know wider cone wider channels then we have two major cones and i have one that's a little bit on the higher higher end which i did here i have this yellow one here and this yellow one down here and the computer did this one which was the correct one i just refixed it because i wanted to make sure if we fall through the 18 SMA in this channel down here, which is the 8240 area, I don't think there's going to be much support till the 38.2, which was the prior 100% or the zero line where we broke out of in this green box and eventually filled the 38, the 50 percent Feb, the 61.8, and eventually the downside of this channel. So remember, trade what we see, not what we think. Let's take a look at the small cap, which is the canary and the coal mine. I really like to use the small cap because it keeps me in line. This is the first one that moves up and the first one that moves down. 
for a trend or change in the market. If you notice the last two weeks since since the Russell took off, this week was range bound, the following week is a range. Does that look like a flag? Yes. But if it cannot clear the 1605, 1600 and clear the 1625 to continue higher, eventually this backside of this channel, if it falls through it, there's nothing to support it till back in this area here. And I'll show you the weekly how it looks like so you guys can get a better feel how the Russell looks like compared to the overall instruments. It has been lagging, that's correct. It has been doing the pushes higher and pushes lower. Hasn't been able to break out. If you notice the last two weeks, sidebar action in the week before we had week one, week two, week three, week four, week five, then eventually week six and seven is side action. If this is gonna be a bullish flag and we can clear the 1600, 1625, I think eventually we can come back up here. If it falls through, watch this backside of this break out of this channel, eventually fall back to the backside of the overall cone. This one is a little bit off. What we want to do is grab the nearest one, nearest points, um, remove, and we'll draw it one more time so we can have a little bit more better accuracy on it. We grab this point here, or we grab this low here in this candle. And we measure it, and this is the area what we will look for in case it falls through. Let's take a look at go GC slash GC. Because everybody is thinking this is you know a push up, a flag. I really wanted the 14 42 43 to reset. We missed it by a little bit that week. It hit the 1446.2, bounced up, could not clear the 1480. I think since it is in this channel, and you can put one wide right in the middle of it. So what we can do, we can grab a channel, just put one in the in the middle of this whole area. That way you guys think of it as, you know, uh, the trend in the market. And what we can do is mark it with a little more smaller range, edit the property. And we can mark it with a baby blue line or yellow line. That way we are aware that's the midpoint range of those two instruments between the wider ranges on the on gold. Okay, this is there it is. So we have this downtrend. I think gold. I would like to see this area here, which is this oval here. This is the consolidation. This time, if it comes back and retests this area, I don't think it's going to get support. It'll eventually fall to to the 38.2 Fed. This channel won't hold it and eventually we'll find some kind of support between the 38 and the 50 Fibonacci and the 50 SMA, which will catch up and be in this area where this oval here. What I want to do is extend it as much as I can till December. That way you guys would be aware of it. And let's do this till the 12th. There we go. So that way it gets the whole range in that area for the Thanksgiving. There we go. So we go on the daily chart and look at it. And this is why I'm not saying to be bullish on gold. I'd like this consolidation because this is a virgin control park that has never been retested. This one's retested. There's one right here which we came back and retested. This time if this creates an H, we are in an uptrend channel here. You can see that I drew it. We eventually couldn't clear that 1480 and we couldn't clear the 18 SMA and fell back through that channel to the downside. If this oval doesn't support it, because remember this was the 1442.9, uh, does not hold. I'd like to see the 200 SMA in this area to be revisited in order to catch a trend in gold back to the upside. The fear gauge is not there yet. So trade what we see, not what we think and hope this was helpful for you guys on gold. And let's take a look at CL. Oil has been, you know, since the Saudi Iran, you know, when they hit one of their wells, we had that push up in the overnight and eventually we filled the gap and fell back down. The 15, the 5475 has been support. The, uh, the 5850, 59 area 20 has been resistance. I think if in order to oil to continue higher, I'd like to see this oval in this channel to be retested up on this area where we fell from. 
we haven't been able to clear this area here. You see that consolidation that tried to push and eventually fell down. Then they dragged it back up in a zigzag pattern, trying to push. If this is go not going to fall through the 5475, it's going to continue higher. And we are inside the same similar situation range in an uptrend. What we can do is grab this candle here and put one right here in the middle of it and so that way you guys can can understand why I'm doing this so that way this is a middle range of it and what we can do is change the trend or the color on it that way you guys understand that we are inside a channel zigzagging to eventually to break either up or down through that trend and this is why I'm marking it that way so you guys think of it as 50% this is the high this is the low and that's the 50% we do have this downtrend here we're trying to break out of and we have this going remember this one was retested so what I'm going to do is readjust this one remove it and we're going to readjust it for the wider band which is up here hope this is helpful so you can see this one is now off so what we're going to do is redo it one more time I know it's a little bit boring but I want to make it perfected for you guys in this range and we put it back in here. Come on. There we go. So that way we have the two ranges. And what I'll do, I'll change the color on it. Edit property. This is my line in the sand. If oil is going to stay elevated above the 57.25, okay? In order to continue higher, if it falls back through, and it falls through the 5662 it becomes bearish back to the downside because it's been going sideways we fell through that upper channel lower channel now we're coming back to the upper channel I think if this is going to continue I'd like it to see it up here before it falls back to the solo let's take a look at the apple okay where are you at Remember, Apple in the last three days fell through. I think it's trying to consolidate. If it falls through this area, I don't think there's going to be any support till we get back to the 50 SMA in this prior breakout of this channel. Remember, I had drawn this one. We went, retested, fall, pushed back higher, haven't been able to come back. If we fall through this 18 SMA, fall through this wedge where it took us higher, this is the first test for a retry for a bounce. If it doesn't, I'd like to see the 38.2 in this actually triangle which is the gap and the second one is down here I'm not trying to be biased or bearish on Apple I'm just telling you here are some scenarios that can happen let's take a look at Amazon Amazon is side action just want you to be aware of it we've been looking at it you know in the side range between the 17 uh, 38 and the 17 uh, 52 58 area um, let's take a look at uh, Facebook Facebook, if you consider this is around the bottom, this is the cup of it, this is the handle, this is the cup. If it's going to continue, it has to clear this area. Let's just click it one time. See, this is the prior high. Oh, whoa, how did this happen? Okay, if this is a flag and it's going to continue, look for it. And if it breaks through this triangle to the downside, look for the 18 SMA in this channel here. That's Facebook. Let's take a look at uh, Google. Google, you know, it fell through this cone. I had this area here. You can make it wider if you want and put your oval here, which will be symmetrical to the other one from before. Remove drawing and grab this candle here. So this one here, keep an eye. If it falls through it, it's going to be the other side of the the 50, the 38.2, the 50 fib, and eventually this wider cone here. I mean, the wider channel on the uptrend. So what I'll do, I'll edit it and I'll put a baby blue or purple one here. We'll, we'll make it yellow on this one. And put one here. So we are aware that th this channel and this channel are that symmetric. If it's going to hold, it's going to push back up. If it falls through, look for the 38 and eventually the 50 fit and the 50 SMA. Take a look at Netflix and FLX. Netflix seems, you know, 
that 308 eventually it retested it it had a nice week you know breaking out of this area consolidation went a little lower and eventually bounced back it's still in the up channel friday it had a little bit weakness came back to close in that area if netflix really want to continue and subscribers and holidays people you know want to participate in netflix you know movies videos product you know their, their own production on movies and you know episodes i think the 200 SMA would be a nice target to the 328. If it falls through this area and the 304, look to the backside of the 288, 292 area in Netflix. Okay, I'm just being, I don't want you to be, you know, thinking of me, you know, being bullish or bearish. These are the two scenarios you look at. Let's take a look at Tesla. This is a great example I had sent uh, to an analyst um, on LinkedIn. He had requested from me take a look at Tesla and I told him hey the 362 area and some change will be the line in the sand which we will never clear and maybe come back and retest the 340 was you know the support area which you don't want to break below on Elon Musk's that new truck that was supposed to be bulletproof windows you know very rugged very strong people didn't like what they did and they they hit the window and it smashed on i don't know if this is a joke or something they are trying to you know play with people's mind and and eventually it fell through on that day after that you know they did that presentation it where look at the height of this area what it was which is really funny 341 and we had 340.84 where the breakout was in this candle here was 341.50 and where did we stay in below this gap there was a gap here you can see it guys we came back fell through it couldn't get up we still have this area here there's a little gap here you see it guys and this is the earning report can they come back fill this gap and eventually where the consolidation was to take it back higher because if you take this distance from here to here or the up here from here to here where's the retracement of that move let's just mark this area here we'll get a fibonacci i want you to guys look at it that way this is the fib you can take options remember trade what we see not what we think and we can come back and eventually fill that 38.2 and the 123 fib and eventually that 50 sma and the 50 fibonacci on tesla before it can continue higher Let's take a look at uh, uh, Tesla. I want to look at Disney DIS. This is something I had tweeted in my chat room, as well as on Twitter, as well as, uh, you know, other places, because people were looking at me and saying, well, they got more subscribers. They are doing movies. They're doing a lot of stuff. This is the earning gap, which is right here. We have never been able to retest it. So what I did, I took the nearest law, which is on the earning report to the high that we did, which was around 150.63. If this symmetrical triangle, we can clear those two candles from the Tuesday, Friday area high, I think it can clear the 150.63 and continue higher. If we fall through it and we cannot get above the 147 area and fall back through the 146 area, 146 area, be careful of it, it can come back to the 142 but i have a bullish bias on disney and i'll show you where it can head to the first 123 percent fib if we clear that you know that prior high from tuesday and friday come back to this area and break out the 123 would be the first target the second target would be around the 159 remember there's a 150 fib here and 138 in this area to take the 123 to the 161 there's a 38 percent here and there's a i mean 38 here and a 50 here so the first target would be 154 the second one is the one 157 156 area and eventually the 159 50. this is what i'd like as a setup if there's if if this happens go with it it's a good trade for a swing okay let's go back and review the es on a faster time frame and we'll call it a day uh, come on what happened slash es 
doesn't want me to do it. Well, slash yes. Okay, this is the daily. And what we can do from the daily, we did the four hours earlier. What I'm going to do is the 78, 20 day average. If you notice in this consolidation, this is the area where we consolidated and eventually broke up. We filled this gap. We no longer need it. But I'm just leaving it there as a reference. We have this cone in this area. What I want to do is extend it more. Let's just let me do this. I'm going to let me do this 12. So that's okay. I shouldn't do it that far. We'll do it a little bit more to the 28, to the 30. Push OK. Okay, this area is basically the oval, the gap from this week when we came back. We do test it here, but couldn't fill the gap all the way from the prior week. This is why I have it. The second area would be here. If you look from 31, 32 to 31, 20, 32 area, that would be a 100 point move if we fall through this gap and eventually fall through the 3092, 3090. And 38.88, it won't support it because this is the prior consolidation of a breakout. And that high was around 30.83, 30.84, where we consolidated. We went sideways for one, two, three. We tried to fall four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Eventually broke out. We came back, tested the 90 area, 92, stayed above the the 3102, 3103, as if we break through the 3100, 3102, look for the 3098 area, I think eventually fills the 3090 and eventually come back down this way. If we can clear the 3112 uh, uh, area, 311175 and continue up above the 18, the up target would be the upper cone in the 3155. So. Hope you enjoyed it. Look forward to seeing you next week on a short week, and we'll see you at Solstice ATR.